like more like closer to like a nine or a ten. Yeah. So what do you what do you do for those end of the weekend games? Like how do you get yourself focused? How do you get yourself prepared um, to be able to have success and not kind of just phone it in and go through the motions? I mean, I usually take some caffeine. That usually helps a little bit, but okay. uh, usually just like trying to like focus on the little things because it like distracts me from like the bigger picture. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It just makes me feel more motivated. Other guys who are experiencing that too, you, you have those kind of last game of the weekend, you know, it's the last game. You're tired. Your body's tired. What's your thought process? What are you doing? Um, how many of you are able have been able to combat that and, and feel like you're, you're still given the effort that's needed? And what, how are you doing? If you are, how are you doing that? Go ahead, Preston. Um, to be honest, uh, I'm almost so addicted to this game. Like, I don't really focus on, like, the tiredness of the season ending. I'm just more focused on, like, the season ending and not able to play baseball for, like, a few months which is a big deal because i like don't know what to do with my time but yeah. um it's just it's pretty easy to keep focused because i want to keep playing as long as i can but so that's kind of the other end of the spectrum it's not the anticipation of the season ending as like a relief it's the anxiety of the season ending is like okay what do i do once i don't have games anymore okay other thoughts around that end of the season, you know, obviously it's different with the end of the season as a whole, the end of the fall, than maybe the end of like the spring regular season or the summer season. What, what are y'all's thoughts? What are you doing, you know, uh, around this idea of games are going to be ending and you're entering like a true off season. How many of you are playing winter sports? Basketball, um, I think it's boys swimming winter, I think maybe anything like that, doing any other sports over the winter. Okay, all baseball here. All right, well, it's something to consider. I mean, again, this has been a long season. Um, Obviously, you know, we, we set goals at the beginning of this fall. Um, this after this weekend, we'll, we'll meet again for our last time next Monday. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the kind of the, the process of evaluating your goals and evaluating your progress. Uh, but that's, that's kind of what we're moving into, at least from the mental skills side. How do we set ourselves up now that there's no games to track progress um, or competition? against other teams anyway, where do we go from here? How do we evaluate goals that we've set? How do we uh, then now reframe goals for the off season? Um, so we'll talk about that stuff next week a little bit, um, but kind of start that process now, start that process going into this week. Um, hopefully you guys are, are doing the post game journals, the post game reflections, um, go back through those, you know, see, Again, identify what patterns you've had, things that you maybe have consistently struggled with or noticed um, in terms of things you want to improve from the season, and then create a plan around that. Um, one last question. Any any uh, discussion points, anything that you had, um, questions about from the last couple of weeks that you wanted to bring up, that you wanted to ask about before I kind of go into what I wanted to talk about tonight? Okay. Um, so we, the last time we met, we spoke a little bit about self-talk. I, I, um, I posted that video of Aaron Donald and kind of his self-talk routine pregame. Um, I came across another, uh, it wasn't a video, it was a transcript 
um, on Saturday, I think it was. And it was uh, Novak Djokovic, um, who's one of the greatest tennis players of all time, talking about what really turned the corner for him in terms of his production and his ability um, to start winning tournaments rather than kind of flaming out. And what he talked about was the way that he changed his mindset about his self-talk. Um, before he started experiencing the, the big time success that he had, he had a lot of the self-talk that we all go through self doubt, um, lack of confidence, you know, talking down to yourself, things like that. And he was always of the mindset that I can't do that. I need to stop that kind of self-talk. <clears throat> and that really inhibited him because he couldn't, um, those, that self-talk still came up. You know, he still experienced those moments of self-doubt and everything. And he would get frustrated with himself because he couldn't turn that off. And he said the big change for him is when he learned that there's no way to turn that off, that that self-talk is going to happen. There's going to be negative self-talk. But what changed for him is understanding that that's normal and that's part of the process, but that it doesn't control how he performs. We talked a little bit about this earlier in the, the fall um, about this idea of confidence, right? It's it's great. We all want to be confident, but we all know that, that we're not going to be confident 100% of the time and we'll still need to perform. So do we really need to be confident to perform well? And it's kind of related to this. Do we need to have positive self-talk to perform well? While it would be great if we could, you know, if we have, uh, we go or we strike out with a runner on third in, in less than two outs, we don't get that run in. It would be great if we could always think, okay, no worries, I'll get them next time. You know, we look at it in a very subjective um, or a very objective manner of this is what I need to do to, to improve. But we know that that's not the case, right? We have these almost instinctive um, words that we say, these things that we say to ourselves. And a lot of times it goes negative. We tell ourselves how much we suck and um, why couldn't I do this and what I should have done and, and things like that. And and there are people who think that I can't do that. I can't talk to myself that way because if I do, I'm setting myself up for failure. And I, I brought this up in, this, in, the, in the sense, you know, with the, the video that you guys all get now from um, hitting, pitching, whatever it is, and your evaluation in your video. And I focused last time on not being too negative, not focusing so much on the things you need to improve and highlighting the things that you're doing well, right? The, the changes that you have made, the progress that you have made. So where I'm kind of branching off here is looking at this post-game evaluation or video evaluation outside of the moment versus the cell talk we have in the moment, when we're performing, um, when we're having struggles, whatever the case may be. So I want you to just think about for a second, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let silence kind of take over. I want you to think about the things that you say to yourself when things are going good versus the things you say to yourself when things are going bad. And you may not even be aware of it, but I want you to try to think of like an instance where you struck out in a big um, uh, moment or you got picked off or you made an error um, or you gave up a big hit on the mound, something like that. And think about the things that you say to your things you think about yourself or the things that you say to yourself in those moments. And then I want you to think about the things you say about yourself or think about yourself when you've had moments of success. So I'm just going to give you a moment to, to think about that. Now, I'll let it be quiet for about a minute um, as you collect your thoughts. Then I kind of want to discuss a little bit about the ability to be aware of that. All right. So just by show of hands, but with the raise your hand button, um, how many of you, when, when something goes wrong, when you experience failure, say something personally negative about yourself?
And I think it's everybody's hand is up, right? So we know that. We know we do this. It is, for whatever reason, it's human nature. Um, we as individuals are oftentimes more negative. We, we focus more on negative than positive. I don't know why that is. It's just kind of a human thing. So we all know this happens, right? How many of you have told or been told or heard, don't say that, don't think that? Yeah, it's a pretty common thing. I've mentioned this, I don't know if I've mentioned this this fall, but this is something that I, I talk about a lot um, in my psychology classes, the athletes that I work with. Our brain doesn't work with don't. Our brain doesn't really comprehend very well how not to do something. Right. It doesn't understand. Like when I tell myself, don't do this, my brain has to think about what not to do first. And what do we know about what we think? What we think is often what occurs. So I try to refrain from or, or get athletes to refrain from thinking about not thinking about certain things. That's a weird way to say that. But when you think about, oh, I can't tell myself this or I can't tell myself that I suck or whatever your brain immediately goes to that thing that you're not supposed to think about. So the reason I bring this up is, you know, everybody raised their hand when something negative happens or something we fail and we experience defeat or whatever, we go to that in, internal personalized, I failed, I suck, I'm bad, I shouldn't have done that. That is completely normal. And what I really want you to do, everybody to kind of get from this talk is that just because you think that doesn't mean anything. And the ability to accept that those thoughts are natural can take away the power of those thoughts. It's when you try to resist them and you, you fail in resisting them, that is almost creates like a cycle, a downward cycle of, I can't think that I suck. Oh wait, I think that I suck. Well, now I suck at thinking that I like, it just creates that negative spiral of it kind of um, water falling downward. And so if you can get to the point where you can accept that those thoughts are going to occur, but that they don't have any impact on what happens after those thoughts. Um, there's a, a brand, uh, like a, a field of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT therapy. And that's the whole point of it. Um, one of the, the guys that went through, he went through the, the DU program that I was in and I actually mentored him for a couple of years. He's one of the lead sports psychologists for the Milwaukee Brewers now. Um, he works with all of their minor league affiliates, um, works with the big league team in spring training, um, and then visits with the big league team every once in a while, like every month or so throughout the season. And this is, he's huge on this idea of, of acceptance and commitment. Um, working with guys on understanding that you can't always control what it is that you're going to think. You can't always control the feeling that you have associated with that. But if you can accept that it's natural for that to happen, it takes the pressure off of feeling like you can't think those things or you can't feel that way, right? It's normal to feel disappointed after you fail. It's normal to be angry at yourself or at the, at the opposing player or at your coach or your parents or whoever. It's normal to feel those things. And being told that you can't feel that way, that, that you shouldn't feel that way, can really be um, detrimental to trying to absolve those feelings, trying to work through. So what you wanna do is figure out, okay, I know these things are gonna happen, what do I do when they do happen? And that's where you build strategies for yourself. That's where you start your intentional self-talk of like, okay, I know I'm gonna think this thing, this is going to happen in the moment, what can I do intentionally, consciously, that will help me move past this? It'll help me get past the negative self-talk into a mind frame of, of progress, of, of process, whatever helps you kind of get through that. And again, that's where journaling really comes in. So now I want you to think about the positive experiences that you've had, the successes that you've had. How many of you internalize success and when you have you know, you get a big base hit or you get out of a jam on the mound or you make a great play. How many of you think, oh man, I'm awesome, I'm great? That's actually more than I expected. I didn't, normally that's not the reaction we go to. 
normally we get the thing of, oh, I, I did that because I'm supposed to make that play, or this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I should do. And we don't give ourselves credit for the things that we do all the time. So those of you that like have that intent, uh, that mindset of when I do something I'm supposed to do, you celebrate that within, that's awesome. Continue to do that. I would probably venture to say that that's not a normal thing that most people experience. I would say most people go to the mindset of finally, I did the thing that I'm supposed to, or yeah, I should be doing that. And it becomes that expectation. This is a really hard game that, that we play and success is not every in every uh, at bat and every pitch kind of thing. So having that conscious mindset of celebrating the things that you do have success, success with can then foster future mindset of like, I, I was working with another player individually um, last summer or over the summer, really good player. And he was really struggling with comparing himself to others, comparing his ability to other players that he's playing with. And even though he's having success, his success, when he has it, he feels like it's what he should do. And so then when he fails, it's obviously, well, I shouldn't be doing this because I should be having this success. And it was a real, it was a real struggle with his mindset of understanding, like when he does things well, he's doing them well because of his talent and to celebrate that, to celebrate the work that he put in, to be able to, to hit a nine mile or fastball and to, you know, be able to, to make plays defensively and do the things that he does really well. We get into this habit of expecting us ourselves to perform well and then not celebrating when we do, because it's what we should be doing. So I think that for those of you that really struggle with that mindset of um, celebrating when I do well and being overly defeatist when I don't, these kind of cues can really help with that. Um, figuring out that process of, of being intentional after the initial automatic response happens, after the automatic self-talk happens, number one, recognizing and being aware of that and then number two, what can I do to, to put myself in a mindset to be successful from there? Both, again, when you have success and when you have failure. Like when I have success, how can I continue that? Being intentional with my mindset at that point. When I have failure, okay, what can I do to overcome, you know, the, the self-doubt that I might have? Go ahead, Max. Uh, coach, is it okay to ever, uh, like, talk negative about yourself in order to make yourself more competitive? That that's a very that's a really good question. That's a very individual thing. Um, some guys do that. You know, that's I, I've I've never been one that's been able to do that myself. Um, and I don't know. I don't know that that's something you can train or like learn how to do. I think that's just something that some some guys just have um, where they can almost like psych themselves up by by talking shit about themselves, right? Talking down to themselves and using that as a motivational cue. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you don't do it naturally, but if it's something that helps you, then that's what helps you, right? I mean, there's no like set way to do these things. So it's figuring out what works for you. So if that's something that works for you, absolutely do it. But if it's something that you're thinking of trying, I, I wouldn't recommend it because it's it would be almost kind of forced and disingenuous. Um, and I think that could end up having you like focusing on the wrong things. That's a good, that's a really good question though. I've, I've, uh, I've always wondered about the guys that do that and like where that comes from. I've, again, I've never, that's never been something that I've used and I would, I wouldn't teach that to anybody that doesn't do it already. Uh, but if it's something that feels natural to you and, and it is a motivational thing, then by all means. Any other questions about this, this idea of this kind of automatic accepting the automatic mindset and then moving to the intentional mindset from there. These things definitely aren't easy to do. Um, again, this is probably a really new skill. A lot of the things that we've talked about for those of you that were, that were a part of this over the summer, um, for the last, you know, six months almost. And for those in the fall, the last month or so, uh, so like these things aren't easy. Right. These are all probably new skills, things you haven't thought about too much. Um, so, again, this this is practice for this. This defeatist mindset can go into new acquisition of of new skills, too. We think that we should pick these things up automatically or pick them up really quickly 
And when that doesn't happen, we can get into the mindset, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why isn't this working? And these things take time. So treat it like, you know, a, a mechanical change on the mound or um, the process of like increasing strength and velocity. It's a process that takes time and it's an intentional process. So you have to work to figure out what those cues are to get you into a, a, a an elite performance mindset if you want, kind of want to think of it that way. Understanding that you're going to have negative self-talk. You're going to have moments of self-doubt. You're going to have moments of anxiety and worry and and all of these things that we, we want to try to avoid. We can't completely avoid them. So understanding that they're going to happen and that it's part of the, you know, performance experience that can relieve some of the pressure of feeling like you can't do these things. And I think that's often where this anticipatory pressure can come from. When I feel like I, I need to do this certain thing in order to be successful, or I have to avoid this other thing in order to be successful when you can't avoid it. So continue to process these things. Like you've been playing baseball for a long time now, but this is a new way maybe of, of analyzing yourself, of evaluating yourself. So continue to work at it, continue to work at it in your practices, obviously in your games. Uh, but as you prepare, you know, for whatever your goal is for next season, continue to think about how can I set myself up mentally to be as successful as possible, understanding all the things that we've talked about. Um, and, and again, I'm available by text, by group me message for any questions that you have, even though, you know, we'll have one more meeting after this next week. Um, but that's more of kind of a wrap up session. I'm available for, for, uh, questions. If you have any, um, if you want to meet more in depth, we can talk about that. Um, but I want you to kind of through this week, <clears throat> evaluate, you know, where am I, how am I feeling about the end of the season? Um, what's my plan for the, this last set of games this weekend? How can I set myself up to, to give the effort that's necessary? Um, and, and Blake, I, I like the way that you put it, not just for yourself, but for your teammates who are out there as well. Um, and then, you know, what are my steps moving forward? Um, so continue to have those thoughts throughout the week. Um, hopefully you guys have been journaling. Um, again, I know the post game journals, uh, that the coaches have been pushing those, but for yourself as well, write out your thoughts. And uh, yeah, I know it sound again, I know it's tedious and, um, it, it's not something that you necessarily want to do or even think about much, but if you can get in that habit of writing out your reflective thoughts and finding those patterns and themes, um, it can really help open up like this, this, process that you may not even be aware of any final questions comments uh from anything tonight or, or anything that's come up um since we started about half an hour ago all right thanks guys for for being uh flexible again i apologize about last night um We'll be back next Monday, so I think that's the 16th. Um, so good luck this weekend. Um, you know, work hard and practice all the things. If anything comes up, reach out. Um, otherwise, I will see y'all on Monday. Thanks, Coach. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you, Coach.